Theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is just what should happen. Uh, in an ideal world, if we keep tossing a coin, it would come up heads, then tails, then heads, then tails, and so on. But that isn't what actually happens. It could get three heads in a row, like if, or maybe even ten heads in a row. And how can we work out the theoretical probability of something happening? So, probability, we can define as the number of ways something can happen. There's the number of ways something can happen that we're interested in. Divided by the total number of ways everything can happen. Okay. So let's use our coin example. So what's the probability of getting a head when we flip a coin? What's the probability of getting a head? Well, First, let's learn how to write our probabilities. The probability of getting ahead, we can actually write like this. So this is, this is how we'd write a probability, where we say P of a head, which just means the probability of getting ahead when we flip a coin. Now, what is the probability of getting ahead using our definition? Well, let's start. It's sometimes easiest to start with the denominator, the total number of ways everything can happen. Well, when we flip a coin, we can get a head or a tail, and it's the total number of ways everything can happen. So if we've only got those two options, that's what's going to be our denominator, because that's the total number of ways everything can happen. And if we want a head, well, how many of those options are heads? Well, only one of those options is a head. So the probability of getting a head is one out of two. What about when we roll the die? What's the probability of getting a six? Well, we can write that as the probability of getting a six. Let's use our definition. The total number of ways everything can happen. Because I like dealing with the denominator first. Well, when we roll the die, we can get a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six. So there's six, what, there's six total number of ways everything can happen and how many of those how many of those options give us a six well only one gives us a six so the probability of getting a six is one over six what if we have one red ball two blue balls and three green balls. What's the probability of getting a red ball? If we're just picking one ball out. Well, that's, let's look at our total options. If all these balls are in a bag, we've got, all together we've got one, another two, three, and another three make six balls all together. So the total number of ways is six, and the probability of, there's only one that's red, so our probability of getting a red is one out of six. What about the probability of getting a blue one? Well, again, the total number of ways is six because there's six balls, but two of them are blue, so we have a two out of six chance. And when we deal with probability, we've always got to give our fraction in simplest form, so this can, numerator and denominator can both be divided by two. Two divided by two is one. Six divided by two is three. So the chance of getting, of picking a blue ball out is one out of three. Finally, what's the probability of picking a green ball? Well, that's going to be, there's still six balls to pick from. But the number of ways we're interested in, well, there's three green balls. 
and our probability becomes 3 out of 6, but we can simplify that by dividing both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, so the probability of getting a green ball is a half. Thank you.